is question number two on the tear-off portion of um, exam four, version A. And it gives us the information. It says if f of x is equal to x minus 1 over e to the x, then f prime of x is equal to 2 minus x over e to the x, and um, f double prime of x is equal to x minus 3 over e to the x. So they already give you your first and second derivative. You don't have to take that. Now it wants us to determine the following. Leave function values in terms of e, and if none, write none. So it first one's the domain of f of x. So what is the domain of this? Well, the domain is any value that we can plug in for x, so it said it does not make the denominator undefined. Well, e to the x is never going to be equal to 0, and our function is undefined when we have a denominator that's equal to 0. But e to the x, if we remember what that graph looks like, looks like this, and it never goes to 0. So no value could you plug in for x that would make our denominator 0. Therefore, our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then it says we want to know the vertical asymptotes. Well, again, the vertical asymptote is where our function is undefined due to the denominator equaling 0. <clears throat> and so we can for no value of x. So that happens. So our vertical asymptote, we have none. Now the next portion says the limit as x approaches infinity. So when we look at f of x, and we would assume as x approaches infinity, we get infinity over infinity, and that's not good. So what we're going to do is take little Patel's rule, and so we get um, 1 over e to the x, and as x approaches infinity, um, this is going to be going to infinity, so we get 1 over infinity, which is 0. Now for the limit as x approaches negative x, or negative infinity, again we have the same thing, but we have to remember that x will now be a negative value. So we're going to really think of that as negative x minus 1 over e to the x. And so when we take the derivative of that, we get negative 1 over um, 1 over e to the infinity because it would be e to the negative infinity, which is 1 over that. So when we keep chain and flip, we get negative e to the infinity, which is just negative infinity. So our limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative. Alright, and then part C wants to know our horizontal asymptotes. Well, our horizontal asymptote is when x approaches infinity, so we already know that that y is equal to zero. And then it wouldn't, this isn't approaching any value, so that's not, that doesn't give us, um, as x goes to negative infinity, we don't get a horizontal asymptote for that. Alright, so that is A, B, and C. And then we have a whole bunch more parts. So part D says number of lines indicate the intervals of positive and negative values for f prime and f prime of x. So what we're going to be looking at is we're going to set f prime of x equal to 0 and f double prime of x equal to 0 um, and find where our values are changing. So when I have f prime of x, that equal to 0, that gives me 2 minus x equals 0 over e to the x equals 0, because I want to set my numerator and my denominator equal to 0. So I know that e to the x will never equal 0, so I just get 2 minus x is equal to 0, and so I get that x is equal to 2. So I plot that number on my point, and then I'm just going to test points on either side. So if I test 0, I get 2 minus 0 over e to the 0, which is 1, so that's positive. And then because it's only got a multiplicity of 1, I know it's going to be negative on the other side. And then, uh, likewise, for f double prime of x, we're going to look at our second derivative and set the top equal to 0. So we get x is equal to 3, and our denominator e to the x equals 0. But that's never going to happen. So we just get our value of 3. Now with that, we're going to test points on either side. Just, again, we're going to plug in 0, and that gives me a negative over negative 3 over um, 1, which is a negative, and because it's got a multiplicity of 1, I know it's just going to alternate. So, that's part D, the number lines, the negative positive values for f prime and f double prime. And so E wants to know our relative local max, or for x equals so local max, we're going to look here, and it goes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 2. And they want to know the maximum value. And 
so when we plug in 2 into our original function, we get 2 minus 1, which is 1 over e squared. Um, and then again, local minimum, but local minimum would be still be in our first derivative. For local minimum, we have none. And then the value, again, is none. And we don't have any endpoints or anything to test, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, um, part F wants to know inflection points, so that's when we move on to our second derivative. We've got an inflection point at x equals 3. And the value, we plug 3 back into our original function. We get 3 minus 1, um, which is 2 over e cubed. So we have an inflection point at x equals 3 of 2 um, over e cubed. And... Um, so the inflection point then is 3 comma 2 over e cubed. And then the intercepts, which is the last part, g, the intercept of this would be um, when we plug in 0 for x and we plug in 0 for y. So we already know when we plug in 0 for y, we get, um, or when we, yeah, when we plug in 0 for y, we get 1. Um, and that would be because that's where, um, that's our root. So 0... Um, we would just look at the top, 0 is equal to x minus 1, so um, we get the point 1 comma 0. And then when we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 minus 1 over e to the 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, e to the 0 is 1, so it's just 0, negative 1 for our intercepts. So almost done with this last this question. And so now it wants to know all of the... Given all of our information that we've just figured out and you wrote down on your paper, we're going to graph it. Um, it's going to be fairly informal. So we know that we have an intercept at um, a 0, negative 1, and also 1, 0. We also know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Um, and then we know we have a maximum at 2, and then I'll say that this point is 1 over e squared. So right there. And then at 3, you have an inflection point at um, 2 over e cubed. And so our graph looks like this. And our inflection point changes, it's not concave up. Well, actually, it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote again. So it looks like that. Um, so, because remember on our inflection point after 3, it was positive, so that means it's concave up. So this is a rough sketch of our graph of um, f of x.